When Hitler invaded Poland in 1939, no experiments were happening, starting with the capture of a small Polish village, however, that would change. In 1940, there was an experiment lasting five days in duration known as the Gunshaw Effect. It tested the human drive to live if tempted with gluttony and delicacies. The scientist, respectively named, was killed by a colleague shortly following the experiment, but he audio logged each day. Reasons unknown. Uh, the original tapes are about to be played, translated by the Allies as evidence to the Nuremberg trials. Day 1. This is Dr. Klaus Gunshaw. I am accompanied by my colleagues, Drs. Victor Ubelgrantz and Joseph Hermine. Today is the start of a five-day experiment to see if gluttony will preside over self-dignity. We have four subjects. Two large Polish men, a pregnant woman who is due in three days, and a daughter of one of the men, aged four. We fed them roasted boar for dinner and gave the men Germany's finest wine. The subjects reacted as expected, overjoyed and surprised. Little do these humans, if that's even what they really are, they will be faced with nightmarish moral dilemmas. Day 2 all four subjects were here this morning. They were served buttermilk waffles for breakfast, with orange juice and milk to accompany. Bacon, eggs, and sausage were also served. It was 1.30 p.m. Central German time when both of the male subjects were given their first task. They were each given a knife. Their goal was to fight to the death. Should they have refused, they would both be shot. Should they have terminated any of the other subjects, they would be tortured, then shot. As expected, they cooperated. Ironically, it occurred the father of the girl lost. The woman and the girl were both crying during, so we had to turn the microphones off. The man's body was hauled away by the guards. The remaining three ate roast stew for dinner. Let's just say <laughs> there was an extra ingredient. Day 3 Subjects woke up this morning. Each were given cheese croissants with butter to dip in. Although considered, no drugs were injected in the mail throughout the night. Given this is a purely mental experiment, no variables allowed. The mail's test was administered at 3.35 p.m. Central German time. A doctor on call entered the room and assisted the man in giving a premature C-section. The man, thinking her water broke, complied. The doctor left a bag on the table after birth. We then instructed him, in private, to extract the infant's heart and consume it. Considering the alternative, he agreed, per our forceful persuasion. Entering the room, he opened the bag, not revealing the contents to the mother. Inside, he found a wide variety of surgical tools. After what appeared to be a prayer, he took the child and struck it in the chest. Accordingly, it died instantly. He then cut open its chest and pulled out its heart, still beating. He then stuffed it in his mouth, whole, chewing and crying as the baby continued to sputter blood, post-mortem. We had guards remove the infant's torso as the man tearfully explained to the distraught mother. From a personal standpoint, I don't see what all the ruckus was about. The little pig had it coming. Three subjects remained. The mother, having survived thanks to an emergency operation after the man's trial, she was physically attacked but mentally altered. She started mumbling to herself and showed no emotion whatsoever. Electroshock therapy was considered, but deemed unnecessary. Subjects were served cheddar worst. At this point, the cuisine was the only thing keeping them going. The female was given her first and final tasks. She agreed without retort, which was unusual. At first, we had her incise the word slut on her breasts. Then, providing proper tools, we asked her to cut up her own feces and ingest it. I'll admit, we had a little fun with her during experimentation. It is noted that she did so without showing pain or disgust. Most intriguing. We then had the male do a trial for the day. He was to take the frozen corpse of the infant and beat her to death with it. Ruefully agreeing, he did the job. The woman not even twitching. The little girl, as predicted, was beside herself. Something unexpected happened after the test, though. The man comforted the remaining girl, explaining as best he could the confinements of the situation. 
Such will be the irony of tomorrow's test. Two subjects remain. Side note. Over the course of the experiment, this male has shouldered the mental workload, yet he remains unaffected. Perhaps he emotionally detached himself from the situation entirely. Huh. Staff note. Dr. Ublegrenz attempted to murder a guard today. So, in coordination with protocol, I shot him. Dr. Wormine remains firmly committed. Day 5. Neither subject slept. Distraught by the events preceding, they held each other hoping to live. They both retreated to France's finest crepes for their final meal. The male was given his final task in exchange for a falsely promised liberation. As this was the only way we could get him to do anything, he was to perform sexual intercourse with the girl in all orifices. Agreeing, this time with no apparent regret, he went in and committed the act, leaving her barely alive. We then provided him with a hacksaw, then told him to saw her in half, starting with the legs. He did so, not reacting to the girl's screams, and then he finally went mad. Taking the hacksaw, he cut his head in half entirely. This is almost medically impossible to commit, assuming his brain would give out before he could finish. Concluding Statement It seems that as a result of broken promises, that it only takes the followed promise of survival to drive these murderous animals to anything. This confirms both mine and the few hers thoughts. Under controlled circumstances, man will eat his own. <laughs>